So at the end of last year, I did a video reading all the nominees for the Goodreads Choice Awards category of mystery thriller. And I had a fun time. It was interesting. We had good ones and bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a real fun time making that video and I thought, let's do it again. But this time, I'm gonna read all the winners ever of the mystery thriller category. Ready? I don't think this is a very good idea. Come on, it'll be all right. I've been putting off doing this video all year because I know I'm probably gonna have to read a lot of books. It's been on the docket since I did that video. A few people have done it since. Some people did a collaboration where they all different people read different categories. So I'll leave that playlist link down below. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna read all the books I've ever won the mystery thriller category for Goodreads. I'm nervous. I don't really know what to expect. If you don't know, Goodreads has been running the Goodreads Choice Awards since 2011, and I'm really excited to see what the trends are in the winners. What's changed perhaps over the years and kind of just see what I think. But going back to 2011, oh my God, it's like a different world on Goodreads and in general, <laughs> whether there's gonna be some outstanding books or whether they're all gonna be fairly middle of the road, like generic <laughs> thrillers. I don't know what to expect, but we're gonna experience it together. This video is probably already 10 years long, so you don't need me chatting. Let's go see me find out what books I'm gonna be reading. <laughs> time to find out what I'm going to be reading in this video. What the best books, the best mystery thrillers of like the past, is it 11 years? How many have we got? Yeah, 11 years. The best mystery thrillers of the past 11 years. Um, seeing what I think of them. <laughs> I'm so nervous to find out what they're going to be. But we're here, we're queer, and we're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna go back through each year, find out what the winner is. I'm gonna write it down in my notebook. I've gotta be honest with you. I've gotta level with you. I have looked at this before, but I think like a year ago maybe. All I remember, <laughs> the fact that it was forgettable, it doesn't, it's not good vibes. All I remember is that there's a lot of Stephen King on here, which I've never read Stephen King. I was hoping that my first Stephen King ever was gonna be like Misery or something, but we're gonna be reading some of his more recent stuff, I guess. Which Okay, and I know that the last thing he told me won. I remember that one. I remember seeing someone speak about that lately and be like, oh, this won the Goodreads one year. So that's all I know. That's all I remember. So let's go back through all the years of Goodreads awards. <laughs> the best mystery list. Okay. Are you comfortable? I'm scared. Are you scared? Yeah, I You should be. So yeah, 2022 was The Maid by Anita Prose, which I've read. I gave four stars. Wasn't my winner, but I did, again, the whole vlog where I read the nominees for that yeah okay 2021 okay so the last thing he told me was the winner for 2021 so this is one I've mentioned that I'm gonna be reading I think this is the only one that you know I'm gonna be reading and again I don't know much about the story and it's about a guy goes missing and his wife and daughter but the it's not the wife's daughter she's her stepmom I'm trying to find him and trying to find out the truth about who he was what's going on it's recently I did keep saying it's become a film it's become a tv show with apple which I'm intrigued I do I would like to watch it if I enjoy this but I've heard really mixed things you guys have been in the comments being like Megan <laughs> I don't know <laughs> so there's that one okay right 2020 I'm hoping there'll be a few live read. Okay, the guest list. I've read five stars. This was the book that really got me into mysteries. I owe a lot to it. I'm glad I've read it. Go Lucy, eh? Go Lucy, yeah. Uh, so I've read the guest list. Good, okay. The less we have to read, the better. The Silent Patient I've read. As you can see, I, didn't, I had a different opinion about this one. <laughs> I gave this one two stars, yeah. Mm, the Silent Patient. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble in big trouble. I can't believe that's one. What was like second that year? Have I read anything else that got close to it? My sister and <laughs> Turn of the Key was second and third. Both of those should have won over The Silent Patient. Silent Patient sucks, sucks, and is vaguely offensive, and I'm never gonna read anything by Alex Michaelides ever again. No, thank you. Okay, 20, what year are you up to? 2018. What one in 2018? We've got our first Stephen King. <laughs> I don't know anything about this. So I feel like he often was in horror, but then he's also run a lot in the mystery thriller to my understanding. This is the start of a series. Okay, okay, okay. We're reading The Outsider. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to think about it. It's got a four average rating, which is pretty good. I don't know. I've just never read Stephen King. and I don't know if now's the moment to begin with these books. I'm assuming there'll be at least one more Stephen King on this list. Okay, 2017, let's see. Oh, the fuck? <laughs> Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. So this is the author of The Girl on the Train. 
but this is what won. A single mother turns up dead at the bottom of a river. A teenage girl met the same fate. Okay, so there's this water that women keep dying in. I've never read Paul. <laughs> so shocked. Oh, 3.59 average rating. Mm. I don't, I've never even heard of this book. How has a book won? Well, we, maybe as we get further into the weeds in the years, there'll be more that I've never heard of. Sorry, my laptop's about to take off as well, if you can hear that. <laughs> I can't believe a book that I've never heard of has won. Like 2017 wasn't that long ago. And this won. Okay, we're reading Into the Water. 2016. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh shit. Fuck off. Um uh <laughs> It's the last in a trilogy. What? What? It... I just, like, I'm a nice person. Why does something like this have to happen to me? What am I supposed to do? Do I just read that book or do I have to read the whole trilogy to just read this book? I don't even want to know, I, but I, I, let me know. Okay, in case I read the whole trilogy, I'm not even reading the synopsis of that. What? How? I'm sad, why would you do that? 2015, what are we reading? Oh, what? <laughs> okay. Okay, oh, the second one came second that year. <laughs> we're reading The Girl with Train, as if we're reading two Paula Hawkins. What has she written lately? Because I've never read a Paula Hawkins and I feel like I don't see a lot of people read Paula Hawkins. Oh, A Slow Fire Burning I Own. Let me, let me actually think before I speak because I own a slow fire burning. Okay. <laughs> but we're reading the other two. Interesting. Well, I'm intrigued by the girl on the train. What is this about again? Oh, and then she sees something shocking and the train moves on. Interesting. Isn't that like um, 450 from Paddington? Like the Christie? Like same thing. 2014. Uh, right. Okay. Right. Right, right, right. Okay. 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 So... The first, this is the first in that series, right? Yeah, okay, so I guess I'm just gonna read the whole trilogy. <laughs> Fuck. I'm gonna read the whole trilogy by Stephen King. This whole Mr. Mercedes. I just can't do it. It ain't for me. It's just not for me, this show. I found it really difficult. Okay, so someone runs over a crowd. We've got an ex-cop. Maybe he's trying to figure out what's happening. Okay, right, we're reading a whole trilogy from Stephen King. Because if I'm reading the first and the third, I might as well read the second just to keep it going. Do you know what I mean? I'm hoping at the very least was, these would be quick reads, but I don't even know if that's realistic for me. <laughs> right, 2013, we're up to the oldest three years. Um... <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay, so, Inferno by Dan Brown. Hmm. <laughs> I, okay, I'm gonna have to ask, I know my mum and some of her friends have read a lot of Dan Brown. I'm gonna have to ask, can I possibly please just read Inferno? Like, don't make me read <laughs> the other books. <laughs> I'm, I feel like it rings a bell that Dan Brown and this series, you can just read the individual books. So I feel like more people have read, yeah, oh no, more people have read that one. But I feel like the Da Vinci Code, I don't know. I'm hoping I can just read Inferno because I'm not reading three other books just to read that book. I'm sorry, it's not happening. What, why have I got to do this? I I actually didn't even react to you because I'm just in shock that, that, well, at least I'm not reading Robert Galbraith. I must be grateful for Small Mercies. What's next? Okay, okay. Okay, I can, I've never read Gone Girl. I vaguely know the twist or like some of the twist, but I'm up for reading that. I'm up for reading that. That makes me, I'm excited for that one. I feel like it's such a classic. I feel like it really put a twist on what the mystery thriller genre was and like really set the tone for the future that I'm excited for that. Last one. What in God's name is this? <laughs> Smoking 17? Number 17 in a series? What? I have never even heard of this. How many votes? This got 4,000 votes. 
4,000 votes. How many votes did the maid get to win in this same genre? 78,000. 4,000 votes is like number 17. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so this is another one where I'm just gonna read this book. I'm not reading fucking 16 books to get up to this point. It seems like a detective series. Stephanie Plum. That sounds like a Cluedo character. <laughs> so those are the books that we're gonna be reading in this vlog. Are we excited? Oh my god, I'm so excited. Wow, my whole life has led up to this moment. <laughs> Lots of Paula Hawkins, which I wasn't expecting. I have got to read a whole Stephen King trilogy as well as another Stephen King. So for Stephen King, I think what I'm going to try and do, apart from that Stephen King trilogy, is I'm going to read backwards in time. So we'll start with the last thing he told me and we will go backwards in time uh, through the books and seeing how, I guess, the mystery genre has changed. Mystery thriller genre has changed. Most of these will be more thriller than mystery. So yeah, I'm going to go get all those books probably from my library and I'll see you soon when I've started the first one. Hi guys, I'm halfway through our first book, The Last Thing He Told Me. Um, it's fine. <laughs> Hannah is our main girly. She's a bit, you know, every woman. I don't really know what her character is other than she loves her husband. And her husband basically disappears because the company he works for is exposed as having like mass embezzlement, fraud, I don't know what any of those words truly mean, but that kind of thing. His boss is arrested, her husband seemingly goes on the run. She's convinced he's running for like some deeper reason to protect his daughter, to protect himself. That's where her, her mind immediately goes. It's clear he's involved in this to some extent, but she's like, oh, there's some deeper, like without having any cause really to suspect some deeper meaning or some deeper, I don't know, machinations at play other than he's just on the run because he's a criminal. She's immediately like, oh, there's something I must uncover. I'm confused. Okay, so that's all you really need to know. And she's left looking after his 16 year old stepdaughter. And like, it's fine, you know, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I started yesterday, I'm halfway through. It's a very easy read, right? So I'm not struggling to get through it. The pacing is good. I don't feel like a ton has happened yet. Basically her and his daughter are like trying to be detectives or what have you. I don't feel like a ton has happened in the 180 pages that I've read. It's fairly short though. I'm listening to audiobooks. The audiobook's nice. It's easy to get through. It's not offensive, but it's not... I don't know, doing anything that I think is particularly successful at the same time. Like, it's just fine. It's so, like, cookie cutter thriller. It's so basic level. And I don't necessarily mean this as a read. Like, I mean this as, it's fine. Like, it's so, has been done before, has been seen before. <laughs> that, you know, it's fine at what it does. It's good at what it's trying to do, but I don't feel anything towards it necessarily. And like I said, I feel like Hannah, our main character, doesn't really have any personality traits other than loving her husband and like being angry. Like she keeps being like, oh, I'm really angry at him for what he's done to us, but like not really being angry at him. She's like got trying to figure out her relationship with his daughter and stuff. It's fine. You know, I don't want to complain too much because this may be the high point of the vlog. <laughs> like, I, don't want to, I don't want to read it. At the moment, it's like a three. You know, some books I give a three and I expected so much more. So I think I come off a bit disappointed. But a three is like middle of the road. You know, it's fine. It's good. Not necessarily my personal flavor, but it's fine. I don't really know what else to tell you other than that. Uh, there's some characters in this and some character dynamics that I think could lead to interesting things being explored. Like there's just been a reveal about her husband and some of the truth behind him and who he really is that I think is interesting. Her ex-husband, no, ex-fiance is like helping her out. And I think they've got interesting dynamic. There's stuff with like police force and like other people of power that is interesting. There's, there's some interesting places this could go, but as a whole, it's just fine. It's fine. Okay guys, I finished. <laughs> The first pack. <laughs> I actually finished this a couple days ago and I'm already forgetting stuff, which is not a good sign <laughs> of the longevity of this book. But I decided to give this a 3.5 on the whole. So there is this section just after I last spoke to you from the halfway mark for like, I don't know, let's say to the three quarter mark, right? So a quarter of the book that I ate up. There's a section that's really good. It's where the book is this really, it's settled into this slow burn mystery. We're finding things out. We're like Scooby and Shaggy solving a mystery, like an answer is given and the 
that immediately raises a que our next question. And an answer is given that immediately raises our next question. I thought the pacing of that was so good. It was really, it was like a five star section for me. But, hell <laughs> no. I think this is pretty forgettable. And the ending, um, I'm not sure I completely understand the logical leaps that we're making from point A to point B to point C for everything that happens in the ending and it's like, this has to happen, you know, whatever. I'm not gonna give any spoilers, but like, it's like, there is no other choice than this. This is the only choice that we're faced with. And I'm like, well, okay. And it just takes a turn. I wasn't prepared for it to take. <laughs> It paints itself as a thriller, then the whole middle half, right, so like the middle two quarters are this slow burn mystery that I did enjoy. And then it kind of goes back to wanting to be like a thriller, like a, I don't know what the word is, but there's a certain genre of thriller that the ending aligns itself with. And I just don't know if it makes sense. I'm very disappointed, I'm very sad. Am I surprised at this one? No, because it has like something ridiculous, like 700,000 ratings on Goodreads, which is ridiculous. And I was actually looking back through the uh, the whole other 20 books were nominated this year of this book. And considering it was a fairly recent year, 2021, I've read a few of them. I have not enjoyed a single book that I've read. <laughs> this is probably the highest rated book that I've read out of the books that were there. Now I do think there's books that if I were to read them, I would enjoy them more. Perhaps like Harlem Shuffle, I think was nominated. Leanne Moriarty, I really enjoyed Big Little Lies. So maybe I'll enjoy that, who knows. But um, I think that year was a bit of a stinker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a stinker. I feel like the mystery thriller genre has, as we've seen with the 2023 list, the video that I did last year, has transitioned massively to mystery. Mystery is trending right now, thanks to me, single-handedly, I have made mystery more popular and publishing is listening. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but, only half joking. <laughs> When previously it was overwhelming in the thriller, right? It was your Gone Girl, right? We're gonna read Gone Girl at some point. That was a massive point, I feel like, in the genre of, then we had many years of books kind of following on from that kind of vibe and spiel and what have you. And I feel like 2021 was perhaps a bit of a transitionary period between thriller and mystery. And so a lot of the books are kind of like, somewhere in between and they don't really know their identity. Whereas when you look at 2023's list, there's so many all out mysteries when there's not really that in previous years. So I think it's just interesting. I think 2021 is maybe a bit of like an in-between year for the genre as a whole. And I just think that's interesting. Now, I do have to tell you that the, the whole like going back in, in years, like reading the year before then reading the year before that is going out the window because I was watching Mara chat about this and Mara's done this video, if you guys didn't know. I still haven't watched it. I didn't want her opinions because me and Mara book two twins. Unless I, I probably have mentioned that already in the video. I don't know, but um, yeah, Mara's done this video and I haven't watched it because I didn't want it to color my opinions. She said that the next one I would have to read, The Outsider by Stephen King, spoils the other trilogy of Stephen King's that is on this list. So the whole reading every book going back in time is going out the window. We're just reading the books in whatever order we want to read. So I am going to start with Mr. Mercedes next. I've got my bookmark already. <laughs> We're going to start with Mr. Mercedes by Stephen King. This is my first Stephen King. Am I a bit concerned? Yes. I would have liked if I was to ever read Stephen King to start with Misery or Carrie or whatever the one that's like November 11 something, the, the one with numbers. <laughs> you know, one of his older books I feel like is probably where me and Stephen King could have better luck if I did want to read him. But fate has forced our hand. So I am going to start with Mr. Mercedes. I'll check with you them halfway through. I'm hoping to finish this whole all today. If we want to get this video up in time, I'm ready. So we're going to try and read this all today. I'll check in with you when I'm halfway through. Okay, evening. Where have I put the book? Here. <laughs> so same day. God, we're proud of me for reading. And it's only quarter past eight. I'm gonna finish this book tonight, girlies. I am just over halfway through Mr. Mercedes. I read a bit and then I've listened to a lot of the audiobook whilst I was cooking dinner. I make the best shepherd's pie on earth. Actually, technically it's cottage pie because I use beef, but whatever, whatever. <laughs> it's the best, it's the best, the best. Anyway, it's not to toot my own horn, but like halfway through Mr. Mercedes, I'm quite enjoying it. I just wasn't expecting that. Okay, there's a lot of caveats to that, which we'll get into in a sec, but <laughs> I'll just give you the plot first. All you need to know, I went into this knowing nothing, which I thought, I think is part of the appeal. So basically all you need to know is that we're following two characters, one who's this retired police officer, uh, the other who is a serial killer who the police officer never caught, right? Who was one of the big cases. He 
committed a mass murder and it was like one of the big cases that that police officer hadn't caught and now they're kind of playing this like cat and mouse game with each other these years on. I need to think of all of my qualifications for me saying I am enjoying this. Firstly, I run into this with zero expectations, right? I was kind of mad that I have to read the whole series. <laughs> like I was kind of upset about that. So I went into it like resenting it. And so I think I'm pleasantly surprised by it. If you go into a book with high expectations and low expectations and you enjoy them the same amount, you have a different reaction to them because of expectations, right? Secondly, I just read a book and I gave one star. You won't see it in a vlog, it was for my patron book club. I hated that book. I hated it so much. So this is like literally Gordon Ramsay saying, finally some good fucking food. Like it, anything <laughs> in comparison to what I just read was gonna set my mind on fire. You know what I mean? <laughs> so there's that. And thirdly, this is my first Stephen King, right? And I feel like a lot of the negative reviews that I've seen for this are people who have read a lot of Stephen King and loved it, right? I reckon if I had read older Stephen King, like classic Stephen King, like Misery, Carrie, etc., I perhaps, you know, a lot of criticisms I see are like, the characters aren't as good as usual, what have you. Perhaps I would be disappointed by this, but because I'm coming into this afresh, I'm like, ooh, you know, I'm not thinking this is the greatest thriller author to ever exist, like levels that you expect from Stephen King. If I'm having a, a fun time, you know, shits and giggles, like I'm having a fun time. Well, we'll get into it. <laughs> Kind of. So I want you to take all of those, you know, all of this with a grain of salt. But I am enjoying it. I'm having a fun time, you guys. I have not been able to put it down. I think I like a good detective story. Like, I really like the main character. The thing is, I think detectives are good. He's kind of not anything. Like, he's like your most basic, like, ex-policeman. He's been gaining weight. He's depressed because he's left. Do you know what I mean? It's like stereotypical everything you can imagine. But like, I kind of like it. I kind of like him. I don't think I read horrible stuff a lot, you know? like. This begins with a gory, horrible, terrible scene. I'm absorbing so much. I'm an empath. I absorb it all. And there's a few moments of that already in the first half. It's probably gonna get even worse. Stephen King seems like gore, and I don't know how you feel about that. I'm a little bit of a wimp, and that makes me feel a little bit sick, those moments. This is intense, right? This is intense. When I say shits and giggles, it's not shits and giggles. Like, it's... We've got some scenes that are a lot and, you know, I'd say less than half, but you're following two perspectives. So that maybe like, I don't know, it's 60-40 split between the perspectives. You know, you are following the perspective of a crazed serial killer. Like that's, it's not fun. It's not enjoyable, but it is enjoyable. Well, I don't want to say enjoyable, that's the wrong word. <laughs> Describe it. So I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying it a lot more than I expected. I'm enjoying the audiobook a lot more than I expected. It's done by the audiobook narrator of, um, the Raven Boys, which I didn't like before, but I'm actually enjoying him with this kind of grizzled police detective vibe. I do want to um, bring up, there is the whole issue of Stephen King using the N-word. Now, yes, the character who's using the N-word is a horrible serial killer who has a lot of shitty ideas and shitty beliefs and does a lot of shitty things beyond just killing people and a lot of fucked up things beyond just killing people, you know? I'm not, actually, I'm not going to tell you because it's a bit of a spoiler, but like, Ooh, there's certain things that make me very uncomfortable. Okay, so there is that, there is that element. And um, I've always been very against that. <laughs> you know, auth white authors using the N-word, but it is the most awful character to ever walk this earth. So I don't know. I think it's, a, I, my opinion is that it's a lazy way to show that that person is terrible. There's other ways. And I think he has shown that this person's terrible. I think it's an easy cop out. But there will be those that argue that it's showing another terrible side of this character, you know? So that is an element that if that would bother you, look out for in this. So I'm gonna go finish it tonight. I'm gonna finish it tonight. I'm ready to like get through this whole series. I now have every book that we need to read, looking at this stack, knowing that I have to read it in like five days. Girl, what am I even doing? What am I thinking? We're gonna do it though. We're gonna try our best. <laughs> yeah, we have all of them apart from Gone Girl. I'm gonna read this whole series and then we'll take a break from Stephen King. Maybe we'll read The Outsider like at the end and we'll get through some of like the Paula Hawkins, like the fun quick ones, you know what I mean? So anyways, I'm gonna go finish it. I'll check in with you in the morning. Okay, I finished Mr. Mercedes by Stephen King and you guys, I'm gonna give it four stars. <laughs> I don't know if that is an unpopular opinion. I know Mara gave it like a two and a half. Uh, cause I saw it on Goodreads, but I think, you know, Kayla gave this like a four, it seems, although, albeit in like 2015, <laughs> whatever. I just think I'm willing to forgive a lot if you give me a page turner that I read in less than a day, which I did for this. Do you know what I mean? I'm willing, God, I was trying to read it first, but I didn't want to put it down. I wanted to get through it all. I wanted to finish it. And for me, that, that 
does a lot. Like I'm willing to look over character flaws, you know, and what have you, if you give me a page turner that I just can't put down. So I feel like my first Stephen King was a success, you know? I'm pretty, pretty happy. <laughs> I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the path that it took. I think it was a page turner. I think it was thrilling. This made me more uncomfortable, I feel like, <laughs> than a lot of, um, other stuff I read. I feel like Stephen King, my understanding is that he goes there with stuff like that. He writes about taboo, uncomfortable, horrible stuff. <laughs> and it definitely pushed me out of my comfort zone with that. I realise I don't read a lot of that. When I read horror even, I tend to go towards campy horror, not horror that's really gonna tackle like horrible horror. I don't do well I think with like tackling the horrible stuff in life and I feel like this started to do some of that and I guess I don't know I read a lot of books about murder but some of the deaths and the way that life and the way that murders happened in this and the reasoning for murders was a lot more like without reason without like I feel like when you read Nagatha Christie right it's like oh they killed them for the inheritance like there's like a solid reason whereas a lot of the death in this was just out of pure like craziness you know and someone not in the right mind and what have you it's more uncomfortable to read about so it was interesting being pushed out of my comfort zone but yeah I would say on the whole it slots in second to me out of all the books who have won ever so far which is crazy <laughs> which is crazy I gave them eight four stars as well but I think over time it's become more of a 3.5 so this does slot in second I mean it doesn't take a lot all you've got to give me is a solid four and uh, you're suddenly the second best book to have won the award to me but I'm pleasantly, I was dreading Stephen King. I'm not gonna lie to you. I had such low expectations. I was trying to keep a positive mindset because I didn't want this whole video to be like two stars, which I feel like we're not actually gonna have anymore. So even though it didn't win, I am gonna go ahead and quickly read Finders Keepers. I will give a review straight after this, a brief review once I've just finished the whole book because this didn't win. This came second, I think one year. So we'll read it quickly because I think if I'm reading one and three, even though my mum said she's read them and she said like, you don't have to read all of them. Like they're kind of like, individual books. I do just want to read it so I finish the whole series. So I'll read this quickly, give you a review, and then we'll get into the third one, which did win in a different year. So I finished the second in the series, Finders Keepers. Obviously this isn't going into our official ranking or what have you. Whereas Mr. Mercedes took me a day to read, this took me like five. <laughs> which isn't good. So yeah, this is the second in the trilogy. It's not going into our official ranking because it didn't win. It came second. Um, um, I've got an ear infection, guys. It's making <laughs> thinking hard. So this one is quite different. It we're not we don't follow Bill Hodges, who is a detective that we follow in the first book, until like the halfway mark because we're kind of following the story of one character in the seventies stole some money and some uh, unwritten unpublished books, sorry, from a famous author, and then many years later following a young boy who discovers that money and those books and kind of the story of those and then Hodges comes into it halfway and I don't think that necessarily worked for me I'm gonna be honest with you like it was such a slow it took half the book to like set up the story it felt like for like the action to get going should we speed it up a little bit I feel like this wasn't even, I think I could have missed this book out. I don't think I needed to read it. There was like zero character development for any of the main characters that I know we're now gonna follow again a lot in End of Watch. Like I didn't need to read it. And the dual timeline, I just, I just, <sighs> it has dual timeline where we're following a bit in the 70s and we're following a bit in 2009, in the 70s, 2009, in the 70s, 2009, what have you. And I'm just, I'm not, it doesn't work for me. I know it works for everyone, right? But like, I just prefer one timeline. And so I just want to read that timeline. And then when we switch to the other one, I'm not interested. I don't care. I'm not incentivized to read it. That's just how I feel. <laughs> I preferred the present day-ish timeline versus the 1970s timeline where we're following the thief. I'm just not, I don't care. And I just didn't want to pick this up. It took me ages to pick it up. I just went days really without reading, which isn't good. Cause now I've got to read like two books a day. <laughs> <laughs> it was fine. I'm giving it a three. Like I still enjoyed it. It was still fun. I enjoyed the kind of bookish reader writer element to it, but I just wasn't interested as interested as the first in the series. So it gets a three from me. I think that this series works well when we've got Hodges from the start of the book, which what I'm hoping is going to be the case in End of Watch, the last book, which did win. That did win. Yeah, this just didn't work for me. It felt like 
none of the characters grew. The storyline was fairly predictable where it was going to go. It was just a case. How long have I not been in focus? The world is testing me today. It's testing me. Can't you save us, Britney Spears? Can we be saved? God, why is Satan controlling the universe? You knew where the story was going to go. You knew where the characters' journeys was going to go. It just didn't work for me. It felt like a very weird middle book. So anyways, I'm now going to start End of Watch. I'm going to aim to read as much of this as I can tonight. I don't know if I'll check and be halfway because I know that this is following... Oh, I don't know how to phrase this. Antagonists from the first book in a very much different state. Perhaps this is kind of verging on supernatural, it sounds like, from the synopsis, which is like the rest of the books have not had any hint of magic or supernaturalness. And so I don't know if I'll check in you halfway or if I'll just read the whole book because I don't want to spoil anything for the first book. And I feel like it would be difficult especially with the character that we're kind of following again, to not spoil something. So we'll see. If I have thoughts that I know won't spoil it halfway, I'll check in with you. If not, I'm just going to read the whole thing. Morning, morning. I just woke up. I will just chat. I have nothing really major to say, but I am halfway through End of Watch. I'm enjoying it. We're back with the main characters of the story. We're back with the characters of the first book. I don't understand why book two exists. Like, it really has zilch zero absolutely no reason to exist i absolutely did not read, need to read that book but anyways you know we're following the same character same plot points of the first book and i'm enjoying being back with hodges so much because i quite like him as a character he's kind of like your typical old detective like i said and i enjoy that and i thought i wouldn't like the speculative element that this book you can kind of tell from like book two this book is gonna have but i'm actually not hating it i'm not like oh my god this is my favorite thing in the world but i'm not disliking it <laughs> I was just at the doctor's because I got an infection and the doctor was like, I saw you're reading Stephen King. She was like, I've had to stop because he's too intense. <laughs> and I do think there is something to be said about the way that Stephen King writes about like violent things. That is like, it's, I don't know. I was trying to describe it again. I think I've spoken to you about this already, but I was trying to describe it to my patrons and they were like, you love no exit. I'm like, yeah, but it's a different, it's a different way that it's described and talked about that I can't quite explain, but it does leave me feeling a bit uncomfortable, but I'm still, I'm really enjoying this. It's fun, you know, quick thriller, what have you. I'm going to go get ready and I'm going to finish it. The aim of the game, the, the, the aim of the game, the aim of the game today is to finish this and another book and then start a third one. That's what we're doing. We're just reading today. So I'm going to go sit out in the garden and finish this up. I've got reading sprints. I probably will finish this at some point this afternoon in the middle of the reading sprints, maybe. Okay, end of watch is finished. I just finished it. And for most of it, I was gonna give it like a 3.5, but at the ending, I did enjoy the ending. They got me, gal. <laughs> <laughs> and I think on the whole, it's a four. It's not as good as Mr. Mercedes, so it's gonna go under that in my ranking. But, you know, I think oh, I should give it a four. The ending almost made me cry. <laughs> I was on reading spirits with my patrons, and if I wasn't, I probably would have cried, but I didn't want them to see me cry. <laughs> Obviously, I can't say much about this because it is the third in the series. I don't want you to know what characters are still alive or what, like, any of that. I do like the characters in this. They are a bit, like, one-dimensional, you know? But I do enjoy their relationships they have. It's fairly, like, easy reading, you know? Like, I enjoy them, I enjoy the characters, but it's not exactly, like, <laughs> you know, it's not hard to read. I can't believe I've read a whole trilogy in one go that is just, like, not me. Like, who is she? Who is she? <laughs> and I'm glad to have begun my Stephen King journey because now I do want to read some of his throwbacks. I've said, I don't know if I've said this to you, but I was saying to my patrons, I'm not going to read his horror because his violence is just too, like, it's just too much. I can't imagine that in a horror. Like, it's already the thrill. I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> but I don't think I'll be reading Stephen King's horrors anytime soon. But his thrillers are good. Now, something before we get on to the next one, I do just want to point out I don't know if any of you have realised this, but I, to my knowledge, and I have looked all these authors up, to my knowledge, the mystery thriller category on the Goodreads Choice Awards has never been won by an author of colour. These are all white authors. All the authors I'm reading for this video and all the authors I've read previously, they are all white. I think we should just sit for a moment on how awful that is. Like, it's almost, like, unbelievable. But I really think it is a problem with the mystery thriller genre. I don't know how 
this might be the case with other Goodreads Choice Awards. If there's any other categories that haven't been won by an author of colour, there's probably a few other ones. But I think, you know, previous years we have seen more authors of colour winning. I know this past year was pretty bad for it, like there not being enough. But um, I really think it is a problem in the mystery thriller genre. And I really want to see a change because I noticed when I discovered that I loved mysteries, right? And before that, I used to read a lot more contemporaries, like YA contemporaries, right? And YA contemporary contemporary romance you know, the, or fantasy now even. I feel like the YA um, genre or like age category as a whole is so much better for promoting and uplifting authors of colour. Still not perfect, still not great, but is better. And I feel like there was such a marked, dif marked difference in how many uh, authors of colour I was reading from when I started to transition more into mystery and leaving like YA contemporary behind. I even remember once I was doing a video like reading your most popular, your favourite mystery books, right? And I had to specifically ask like, does anyone have a favourite mystery book by an author of colour? Because I was getting fed up as how I was only reading from white authors. Yes, I do seek them out. There are authors of colour writing mystery out there, but it is so much lower than other genres, I feel like. And people struggled to come up with an answer. I asked specifically, I want an author of colour mystery book. And people were messaging me going, oh, it's not by an author of colour, but I love this one. And I'm like, what the f <laughs> It's like by a white man. And I'm like, that's not how this works. I want an author of colour mystery book. I really think not enough authors of colour are being published in the mystery thriller genre. And I think that the never winning this category is a reflection of that. I think it's terrible. So keep in mind, keep that in mind during this whole vlog that this is just white people. And I really think the mystery thriller genre needs to do better. I think it is one of the worst for diversity out of all genres. I really do. So anyways, we have, how many books do we have left? Oh gosh, we have six books left um, to read. I fully am within my right to DNF. I'm, listen, I DNF'd one book, I think, in the other Goodreads Choice Awards video that I did. If I need to DNF, I'm going to, but I also don't really want to. Like, I'm kind of excited for all of these. I think let's pick up and tick off the quickest one off the list, which is the first one. Let's throw it back. Back to 1999. This isn't 1999. This was published in 2011. Wowza. But it is only like 270 pages and the font is freaking massive. <laughs> so this was the first winner of the Goodies Choice Awards for Mystery Thriller. I'm intrigued to see what I'm going to think of this because this is like number 17 in like this mystery series or what have you but I don't know I mean I don't know what to expect I don't know what the plot is at all but I think this will be a nice quick read and then we'll try to get through as much of another one on the list as we can today is the plan so yeah I'm gonna go read this and I'll probably just let you know my thoughts when I finish it I've just woke up again why do I keep filming when I've just woken up like I look rough <laughs> I haven't even brushed my hair. Okay, right, but I have to talk about this. I finished it last night and I just need to like talk about it so that it's out of my life. I don't even know where to start with this, you guys. I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> I just don't know where to start. So this is like the 17th book in a series, right? So like we are, you know, starting off not knowing anything <laughs> like in the middle of this. But it seems like Stephanie, Miss Girl Stephanie, she works for like bail bonds, which I, we don't have something like that in the UK because you have to like, bail doesn't work the same way, I don't think. But she like has to get people to go to court or something, I don't know. And there's all these bodies, like murdered bodies turning up on the kind of like estate where she's working. It's a long story, you don't need to know all of it. Um, This was bad, this was really bad. <laughs> was so bad. I'm giving it a two. The only reason it's a two, I'll tell you one positive thing about it, is that it's like funny. I don't know that I found it funny, but it's like a nice respite from the violence that was Stephen King's books. Like the darkness, the, the kind of depth that, the, that humanity can go in terms of like horribleness. Like this is like jokey. Not that I found it funny, not that it was funny, but. <laughs> you can say that I wasn't funny. Okay. You may not like what I was saying, but you cannot say I wasn't funny. At least it gave me a break from what I had been reading. That's the only reason it's two stars. It's terribly written. We have a best friend sidekick called Lula, Luna, one of those, who I realized halfway through the book is black. And like, I should have guessed because every like, Mm, slightly problematic stereotype that you can have was there. Like she loved fried chicken. <laughs> she was a voluptuous woman who tried to wear like 
skimpy clothes. She used to be a hooker, maybe. That's what they referred to her as. I don't, that's not me using that terminology. That's what they refer to her as. So I mean, like, there's that. Also, there's barely any mystery in this. It's kind of like, obviously, I get the sense that every book in this series is the same thing, basically. <laughs> but like, the mystery isn't a big thing. There's, I swear to God, like 30 scenes where characters are eating in this book. They just go places and get food. Like, that's all that this book is. It's like going places and getting food. That's all that it is. And it's like a love triangle. You know, I assume this love triangle goes on for the whole series and she's like with one of them for a bit, with one of them. She's like dating this one guy and they're like in an open relationship. But like she says, we say we are, but neither of us dates other people. But she is fucking this other guy. <laughs> Too much drama for me. <sighs> Who's in the love triangle? Like she sleeps with him multiple times in this book. But the other guy's her boyfriend. And she says that if she found out that he was sleeping with anyone else, she'd like beat the woman up. And I'm like, this makes no sense. Maybe that's like a very 2011 young person kind of, I don't know. Or maybe I'm just like, I just don't like that in books, okay? Like if someone's your boyfriend, just make them your boyfriend. Like you don't need to be sleeping with other people, just decide. Like I don't, I just don't like it. Because he doesn't know. Here's the thing, like it's like secretive. And like she, whenever she's in trouble, she calls both of them and they both turn up for her. <laughs> oh, not that I'm saying she needs to tell him, oh, I slept with him last night. But like, she's kind of hiding it from him. I've gone red. <laughs> I just hated it. It was so bad. It was like beyond bad, but I think it's supposed to be bad. Like it's supposed to be quick read, like lighthearted, ridiculous, you know, the ladies who read this get excited about her sleeping with these men, but like it wasn't even sexy. Like the sex scenes were comical. They weren't, I don't know you guys. I guess this was from a different era, right? It's the first book that ever won. It's from a different time we liked different things but yeah it was terrible <laughs> i'm proud of myself though i still haven't done after book i'm not promising i won't because that might happen we've got five books left i'm gonna start today gone girl now here's the thing i know some of the twists in gone girl i've tried to stay away from it as much as possible so i don't really know the plot i just know that she goes missing like a woman goes missing and everyone thinks it's the husband but i know a few of the twists but then i think there's more twists that i don't know about so anyways it has no no reason to be this long gone girl the audiobook is 20 hours what thriller needs to be 20 hours? I'm sorry. But I'm excited to read this because this book defined the thriller genre for like at least five years afterwards, you know? It really defined the books that people are reading at the time. Now I think the trends are shifting, but this kind of like domestic thriller was with husbands and wives like hating each other, whatever, was massive, right? So I'm excited to see the effects that this book has had on other books that I've read, other books I'm gonna read in this video. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start reading. But I'm gonna try and read it as quick as I can because why the fuck is it 20 hours long? What's going on there? Um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know what to say! know if because this is like the book the thriller it's just not quite doing it for me i don't know if i'm going into it with too big expectations right so you probably know the synopsis of this amy dunn has gone missing on her and her husband nick's wedding anniversary and like kind of like you know nick we're reading from his perspective and diaries that amy has written and you're kind of like Nick, you're a little bit, little bit sus. Like he's a bit stupid. He's just dumb, dumb man, right? And I just don't think I like reading from dumb men's perspective. I'm not interested. I'm halfway through, by the way. I just don't like reading from dumb men's perspective. Like why, why should I have to do that? Why should I have to do that? I should be free of the constraints of reading from dumb men's perspective. And the thing is, I know the twist, right? Or at least the like, what I think is gonna be like the halfway twist, I know it. I know the twist, right? And so there's certain, thrillers that I think are still fine to read if you don't know the twist. Like I remember Big Little Lies, I'd found out a massive twist of it, but I still loved reading and the reading experience. But this one, I'm just feeling like I struggled to know how I would have read it. Would I have figured out the twist? Would it have been really obvious? Like, I don't know if it would have been like a gag moment. Like, I feel like it's pretty obvious, but obviously I know the twist, so I can't say that. But I don't think I would have been gagged. You know, it hasn't happened yet, but I don't think I would have been gagged. The writing is just fine. I don't think the pacing is great. 
I don't think it should be as long as it is. I think we could have cut a hundred pages from this. Not from the half I've read, <laughs> but from the book as a whole, you know, I think you could have easily cut some. I think it's slow and a bit meandering with like the two perspectives. Like we've got the diary entries of stuff happening years ago from her perspective. And I understand why they're in there, but like, I'm not loving it. Yes, this yes. is a concern and a worry. <laughs> is it because I have come into this with such high expectations because it is the book, like it's such a popular book, it defined the genre. Or would I feel the same, it just feels average. It doesn't feel incredible to me. Unless it pulls out the stops in the second half, it's like a three. <laughs> I don't like reading from Nick's perspective. I think it's fairly obvious. It's too long. I mean, here's the thing, right? I'm reading this many years on, right? When did this come out? 2013, probably? 2012, okay. The twists, to me, feel generic. But like, was this the first book to do those twists? Or like, to really, like mainstream book to really twist in this way? But for me, the twists seem generic. They seem obvious in a domestic thriller. Anyways, and it's too long. It's too long. It is too long, in my opinion. <laughs> so I'm gonna go finish it. I'll let you know. I'm just gonna like, read the whole thing in the garden now. So we'll see, we'll see. Okay. Can we just not? I finished this last night. It's now the afternoon. I was like, check my watch. <laughs> it's the afternoon of the next day. Um, I have barely any opinions on this book. And that's really upsetting me because if I'm gonna come here and tell you I gave this a three star, which I did, I feel like I should at least be able to like back up my opinions, but I don't really have any. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. Okay, no, I think I do get it. I think. Firstly, the kind of thriller that this book spawned, the married couple who are both shitty people who hate each other. <laughs> One of them maybe kills each other. Like I've read that a thousand times and I feel like this really began that kind of trend, like particularly domestic thrillers between husbands and wives. And I just could not give less than a fuck. I never like them. I never like thrillers about husbands and wives. I don't know why I keep reading them because I just find them so boring. The themes that get played upon when looking at why, why a husband and wife might be clashing, I just find so boring. Someone's cheating. Someone's lying about who they are. I don't, I don't care. Like, I don't, don't like it. The second half of this was a bit better, but I know some of you are gonna think I'm crazy for saying this, but I think it should have gone harder with what it was doing. I don't want to say what it is, but like with some of the characters changes and what have you that we have in the second half, like I think it should have gone harder. I don't think it went hard enough. And I know that's crazy. All the reviews are like, oh my gosh, holy shit, this is mad. I didn't, f I was just like, okay, okay, okay. I feel nothing towards this book. I feel like I'm gonna forget it in a day, but I don't think it's bad. It was readable. Like I read it in a day. I had a good time reading it but I think it's incredibly forgettable and I don't, I don't get the hype. This, this type of thriller isn't for me. It's not for me. It's not something I enjoy. I like mystery. I like thriller, mystery adjacent stuff. It just is so boring to me. It's so boring. And I think there were some character inconsistencies that, you know, I don't want to, they're spoilers, but like inconsistencies occurred just to help the plot move along in the direction the author wanted. And I hate when that happens. It's like one of my biggest pet peeves is like that only happened so that the story could go in the direction the author wanted. It doesn't actually fit with the character's personality traits that we've, that we've known. It just felt a bit ridiculous. Now I will say, I think Gillian, 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 not sure. Uh, Miss Flynn, I think she's a good writer. Like there's certain lines in this that gave me pause and felt way better written than a typical thriller. So I can see why people would enjoy it because of that, but it was too long for me. There's no reason to be as long as it is. I don't like dual perspective, dual timeline stories. So that's not gonna do it for me. I don't like husbands and wives. So that's not gonna do it for me. So I just think me and this book don't work, but I feel like this is such, a momentous book it was such an integral book to the genre that i feel like i can't just come here and sit here and be like well <laughs> not for me it was fine i don't have a burning reason as to why i didn't love it i just didn't love it and it's just not for me i'm glad i've read it because now i know all the fuss about and i just don't understand it but that's okay that's okay so we have four books left i think next let's get into a paula hawkins because we've got two to read i'm gonna go for the one i'm actually a bit less excited to read because i think the synopsis of into the water sounds like more my thing so let's read the girl on the train next which again is like you know a super hyped thriller and we'll see what i think Blah, blah, 
<laughs> Draw more, everyone. Um, we have our first DNF. <laughs> What's gonna happen? Gonna shoot me? I doubt it. They have to catch me first. I'm like a whippet. I <laughs> just. I'm not doing it any longer, you guys. I gotta be, I gotta level with you. I didn't wanna show weakness because I don't wanna show weakness. I'm a boss bitch. <laughs> but this video is ruining my life. These books are taking far too long to read. I've been doing it for weeks at this point and it's Friday and I'm getting this video up by Sunday, come hell or high water. I'm just, all I'm doing with my life is reading these books at the moment. And so I'm not gonna stick around anything I'm not enjoying. I got about 150 pages into this. So I feel like that's a good go. You know, it's what, like 400 pages long. I almost got halfway. Um, I detest this. <laughs> Vague synopsis, you've got Rachel who gets this train every day and she sees, she like spies on these people in their gardens. And then she sees something and then the woman goes missing and she's like entangling herself up in the investigation basically. And um, we also have the perspective of that woman. Okay, um, I hate it. <laughs> I'm so, prevailing feeling, boredom, bore, I don't understand. I don't understand. Don't understand. Don't understand. Don't understand why this is so such a popular book because nothing has happened. Nothing is interesting. Nothing is intriguing. There's nothing to make me want to read. It's the truth. I think at the end of the day, right, multiple problems here. This type of thriller isn't for me. It's very Gone Girl-y. Like I can tell it's been inspired by Gone Girl. Horrible characters. Horrible characters who like, they don't even feel real. These none, no one in this book feels like a real person. They are all thriller figments of imagination. I hate that in thriller books. So many, I, every thriller I rate low is because it's like, here's the thing. <laughs> I know, I know I can't take it anymore. I know sometimes I say I love caricatures in thrillers and mysteries. That's when it's camp and fun, right? This is not giving me camp or fun. It's just giving me Nonsense. Nonsensical. I'm quite impressed by how long that's staying on my forehead. I love when, in a mystery book, you've got these characters who are like larger than life and like stereotypes almost of like, I don't know, a rich man or whatever. Like it's fun. It's fun to play off that. This is not giving me fun. There's no characteristics. I, I, I'm not enjoying it. So it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> We're done here. The narrator is an alcoholic who has blackouts and so she's an unreliable narrator. And here's the thing, I've always said in my life, I don't mind unreliable narrators, but like both this and in Gone Girl, something about it just pisses me, like I just think it's in a cheap, easy way. It's not exciting, it's not innovative. Well, maybe it is innovative, but it's just been so overdone since that I just don't get it and it's not my kind of thing. I don't like any narrators. They all sound, there's like multiple sectors and they all sound the same. Um, and it's just not fun. It's not a fun read. It's miserable, it's gray, it's dreary. But like, if you're gonna be miserable, give me like, like visceral misery. This is just gray, drab, dreary. It's gone, whoop, it's a library book. I'm not throwing it. I thought we weren't gonna get a DNF. And here's the thing, like it would've taken me just a couple hours to read the rest of this, but like I need to allow myself DNFs. I'm not a DNFer, <laughs> I don't DNF, but I need to be kind to myself and allow it for my own sanity. So I think next let's start Inferno by Dan Brown. I know this is the fourth in a series, but I'm hoping I'll just be able to like pick up and get a good sense of, of roughly what's going on. I don't really know much about this whole series, like this whole Da Vinci Code series, but I'm gonna give it a go. I'm gonna read it. It is 600 pages long, but I've got the audiobook and I'm gonna try and read this whole thing tonight. It's like, what time is it? It's quarter to five. <laughs> and I'm gonna try and read the whole thing tonight. I believe in myself. I'll check in with you when I'm halfway through. Good morning. I just woken up <laughs> and I have some not the best news. What is that? There's like an alarm outside my window. Can you hear that? My room is a mess. I'm trying not to let you see any of it. Can that alarm stop? Okay, thank you. <laughs> I have gotten halfway through Inferno by Dan Brown. I'm, I can't even, I've taken my bookmark out, but I've got 300 pages in. I've read 300 pages of this book, right? Okay, um, I'm DNFing this one as well. It's been playing on my conscience. I don't like DNFing. If you're a regular here, you know I never DNF. <laughs> 
But I have a big reason for this one. And it's it's a soft DNF. Unlike the other train, I'm never reading that again. This one I'm not gonna mark as a DNF on Goodreads. I'm just gonna delete it from my books because I'm open to reading this series in the future. I'll give you a quick plot. We've got this um, Harvard man, <laughs> Robert Langdon, wakes up in hospital bed, no idea how he got there, who he is, and he's on this like chase because he has something that these other people want. And my big problem with this is with it being the fourth book in a series, despite everyone being like, oh yeah, you can just read that one. Every time we meet a character, I'm like, am I supposed to know you from a previous book or are you new to the book, the whole series? And it's pissing me off. <laughs> Like, I can't enjoy the book at all. I can't focus on the book because I'm so concerned with wondering what information I would have had from like the previous three books that is like doing me a disservice and not understanding aspects of this. So like a character who's friends with Robert Langdon just died, right? And I'm like, is that supposed to be emotional because we've met you in previous books or is this the first book that you're in? And I just can't, I can't do it guys. <laughs> so sorry. I'm so sorry. Like I, I don't want a DNF. I'm not a DNFer. But um, I've read 300 pages. So I'm open to reading this in the future. I... I think his writing's okay, Dan Brown, but there has been certain moments where, particularly when he's writing kind of like from the woman's perspective, that like has rubbed me up the wrong way a little bit. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. The way that like Sienna, who's this doctor that he's with, oh, the way that she's talking about her feelings towards the doctor within like two minutes of meeting him, I'm like, oh, okay. Okay, it's just such a man writing stuff. And I'm gonna be honest, this era of thriller, Dan Brown was bigger like in the pre-2010 noughties, although this is the fourth book in the series, like this kind of thriller is like what kind, of, what kind of was before Gone Girl. And so yeah, I feel like it's very indicative of what the genre used to be like, and that's not my favorite thing either. Like it kind of just feels like we've been running around for 300 pages, like running from one place to another, and I'm not especially interested in that. So we're DNFing, but we're not gonna DNF the last two books that we've got, okay? Don't worry, we're gonna read them both. I'm gonna go ahead and start and hopefully read the whole of today, The Outsider by Stephen King. I know this is like a standalone technically, an 11 year old boy is murdered, everyone thinks it's the town's little league coach, but I think we're gonna have Holly back as a character in this from the Mr. Mercedes trilogy. And I do just wanna say one thing about the Mr. Mercedes trilogy, it's been playing on my mind and I I didn't really know how to phrase it when I was reading the series and it's just that you have uh, Holly who's neurodivergent and Jerome who is black and they're kind of the two sidekicks to Bill Hodges right and my opinion is I like them as characters I really like reading about them and you know, from their perspective I really like them as characters but I'm not entirely comfortable with how their marginalizations have been presented by Stephen King. And I feel like that perspective isn't gonna please anyone because there's gonna be people in the comments who are like, want me to call Stephen King racist and problematic and what have you. And there's gonna be people who are gonna say, you know, writers can write what they want and he's put a lot of care into these characters and what have you. And I don't necessarily fall on either side of that. I, my opinion is I really like reading about these characters, but I don't think that they're I don't think their representations have been necessarily totally handled with care. But also, I am not neurodivergent, I am not black, so, like, I can't entirely speak on it, but I would just put that out there as, like, a warning, if that makes sense. Anyways, we're gonna read my next Stephen King, my fourth Stephen King, who is she? <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and edit a bit more of this video and then start The Outsider, but yeah, we're aiming to read this all today. It's, like, 450 pages long, so I will check in with you when I'm about halfway. Oh, wait, no! Hang on. <laughs> I realized there's one other thing I meant to tell you. Turns out there were two more years of Goodreads Awards. There was a 2009 and 2010, but they're not on that main Goodreads Awards page where you can go back through and look all the years. I only found it through Googling because they weren't presented in that way where you could see the votes that all the books got. It would just say, it was like a blog post and it would say, this was the winner with 30% of the vote. Um, I think the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo series won both the mystery thriller in those two years. And we're not going, we're not going to read them. We're counting the ones that Goodreads has decided to leave in the canon because 2009-2010 are not on the list on the Goodreads Choice Awards page. Anyways, that was all the news. I'm gonna go start The Outsider. Okay, I am halfway through The Outsider and I am pleased to report I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. So the basic premise of this book, all you need to know is that a kid has been murdered in a brutal, horrible way. And all the evidence points 
to the Little League coach, right? Who's also like our English high school teacher. It all points to him, but he also has an alibi, a solid, tight, verified alibi that means he couldn't have committed the murder, but his fingerprints, his DNA, everything is with the body of this child. So it's like the question, how could he do it? How could he be in two places at one? What's happening here? And I'm really enjoying it. It was a very strong hook, like it got me. But that question of like impossibility, how could this happen when this is impossible, was really, really hooking. It Re made me really want to read on. I didn't know though that Stephen King had such speculative elements in his books. I knew the horror, but I thought his thrillers were kind of like, grounded in reality. Now I still don't know the way this is gonna go, like it could go many ways. You know, with End of Watch there was that speculative element, and now with this there is a speculative element, like could there be a creature or something? I, I don't know, I'm making this up. Was what my what my brain is thinking, <laughs> not necessarily what the book is making, is like saying, but my brain is thinking, is there a creature that can like, shapeshift or whatever, I don't know. It's crazy. It's crazy, I think this is crazy. No. I didn't, I wasn't prepared for that. I didn't know Stephen, Stephen King did that. I knew like there's Pet Symmetry or whatever, which I think is like dead pets coming alive. I don't know. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It's not gonna be a five star. I'm yet to read any Stephen King in this video where like I start and I'm like, oh, this could be a five star. It's like a solid four is what this feels like, you know? But I already feel like there's some certain tropes that are being reused around types of people, around plot points, around crimes, around, he loves Subarus. Every... I mean, I don't even know what a Subaru is. I don't know cars, but he can't shut up about Subarus. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and you know, I am not, a part of the Stephen King discourse, like around stuff people don't like about him, people, stuff people like about him, around what his books are usually like. Like I have never really listened to a lot of people talk about Stephen King. I feel like I've always almost phased it out. So like, I don't know what the discourse is. I could be like touching on stuff and everyone, as if I'm like a genius and everyone's like, yeah, we know. <laughs> everyone knows that about Stephen King. But Holly's about to appear again from the trilogy that I read and I'm excited for that. I really like Holly as a character. Like I said, not, entirely comfortable with how she is represented and the different aspects of her are represented but I do like reading about her as a character. So yeah it is the evening but I am just gonna try and finish the second half of this tonight or as close as I can get to finishing the second half of this tonight. I've read pretty much the first half just out in the garden now and like I said it's really gripping. I'm really enjoying it you know. I do get the feeling though it could be a bit long like I feel like we should be getting a bit further than we've maybe already got in like 240 pages. So we'll see, but I'm looking forward to finishing this tonight and I will check in with you in the morning. Okay, I just finished The Outsider and I don't know what to think because I, okay, here's the thing. I enjoyed like the whole reading experience of reading this. I loved Holly being back in the book. I really enjoyed like the intrigue at the start. Like I said, it really hooked me, but I kind of finished the book and I was just like, okay. Like I didn't feel anything. Push me up against the wall, give me a kiss, then I might get excited. I have no idea what to rate this. <laughs> I really don't. Maybe the ending felt a bit rushed and just felt a bit like, okay. Do you know what I mean? Like it didn't shock me. The ending was just like, I guess the natural course of events. It didn't grab me. It felt like a bit like the easy ending. But I don't know, like I genuinely, I don't know if it's that like I've read too many thrillers in one go. And like, let's be honest for a second. Let's be completely frank and honest with each other. All of these books that have won, I don't even need to like, this is probably be my conclusion to the video. I'll probably repeat myself in the next clip. I don't need to read this last one to know this. All of these books are the most cookie cutter, made for the average reader thriller book. None of them really have anything like special to them. I've read all of them and I'm just like, Okay, like they're all just fine. They're all basic. They're all for the general reader. You know, I feel like with the Goodreads Choice Awards, it's a popularity contest. So like, even with the nominees, you're already just gonna get like the most popular basic thriller with a few sprinkled in that I think do something imaginative and different. Like for example, last year with Wrong Place, Wrong Time, I really loved. The winners are gonna be even more so of that. Just like the most basic thriller. And I just feel like I've, I am, um, my mind, like has been whittled down to like <laughs> nothing by reading all of these books. I never usually read this many of one genre in one go. So I don't think that helps. I think usually I read a lot of variety. And so I'm just kind of like, ugh, I'm done with thrillers. <laughs> you know what I mean? But also these are all the same. These are all the same. Not to mention we've read three Stephen King, but like they're all the same. They're all for the same reader. None of them are doing something really different. 
this was fine, but I'm probably not going to remember it in a long time to come. I'm going to give it a 3.5. I really did enjoy aspects of this. Like, I don't want you guys to think I think it was bad. I There was, like, the intrigue, the possibility, Holly in it, but I just don't get a four-star feeling. But I think in terms of the ranking, I'll put it above the last thing he told me. So it was, like, at number five. So that's where I'd put this overall. It was fine, but it didn't do... Yeah, it didn't do a ton for me. Okay, so last book, you guys. I'm so ready for this to be done. This vlog has ruined my life. I am fed up of reading these books. I don't know if you can tell. We're gonna read Into the Water. I'm probably just gonna go read this whole thing in one go, and then I will check in with you at the end because this video is already over an hour long. So we don't want any more. <laughs> Let's just go read this whole thing and see. I'm intrigued. Obviously, I DNF the girl on the train, but I'm hoping for good things from this. I feel like the synopsis is more my kind of thing. So let's see. I um, I have a sneaking suspicion that Paula Hawkins is not for me. <laughs> I did not like this at all. It's not for me, Mark. I'm, I feel terribly ill all of a sudden. I don't even know where to begin with this. Let me tell you the plot. So basically all you need to know is that a single mother has been found drowned in this pool where over the years, many girls and women have drowned there. It's unclear at first whether she has done that herself or whether there's foul play involved. But yeah, over the kind of course of history, witches used to be drowned there, that kind of thing. And we're following, I don't even know how to tell you we're following. Her sister <laughs> comes to look after her daughter and we're following all these other characters kind of in this small town as well. Now, firstly, Miss Paula, there does not need to be as many perspectives as there are considering so many of them are boring. <laughs> There is, I kid you not, like 10 POVs in this. We don't need 10 POVs. <laughs> there's so many characters, I had to keep going back to the start where there's a cast list. Now, here's the thing. In a murder mystery, I like a cast list because I feel like that's more of a convention of the genre. This stinks of the editor being like, yeah, I think people are gonna you know, get lost on who's who and like whose relation is to everyone else. And Paul was like, just stick a, stick a cast list in at the start. That'll, that'll fix it. Because I, up until the end, I had to keep going back and checking who was who because I just could not keep like I just <laughs> I couldn't keep it in my head who any of these people were I don't think the writing was great obviously there's just something about Paula Hawkins I don't like because I did have to go on the train I just feel like this is so like I said in the last clip bog standard thriller I don't understand why this won like why did this win I don't get it like it's just so nothing I don't even know what to say to you. It was a snooze fest, guys. This book was a snooze fest. It was boring. I thought I'd enjoy this from the synopsis, but like, it somehow managed to just be so boring. And also, towards the end, like, with all the reveals that were coming out, because we had so many characters, it was like, this person did this, but this person did that, and that made this person do this, and that made that person do that. Like, it was so convoluted. Yes, I like a complex mystery, but like considering all these characters are boring and I didn't care who any of them were, like I just, I didn't care. <laughs> I didn't care. I will forget I read this in a week. Like it is so forgettable. It's, it, it was crap. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Miss Paula. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I own another Paula Hawkins. I own her most recent one, A Slow Fire Burning. And I don't know whether I did it. I got it for a pound at the charity shop. So like, you know, it's not the end of the world if I don't like it. But I did like the sound of it. So maybe I'll give her one last go. But both of these sucked ass in my opinion. I give it, have I told you I'm giving it? I'm giving it a 2.5. Because I think quality wise it is a bit better than the twos I've given out. And did I give more than one two out? I don't know. But the two, at least smoking 17, I gave a two. And this is better than that. So I'm giving it a 2.5, but I'm rounding it down to a two on Goodreads. It was not great. So there we have it. That is all the books I read on this vlog. Dear God. <laughs> Dear God, what a sad little life, Jane. So this is my final ranking of all the Goodreads winners for mystery thriller ever, apart from those first two years, because Goodreads removed them from the canon. That's on them, not me. <laughs> the guest list is still my top one ever. I don't think anything else has topped the guest list for me. Um, but that was a very important book for me, you know, got me into mysteries as a genre. It really was influential for me. But other than that, my favourite was Miss Mercedes by Stephen King, my favourite from this video. But even then, like, this was solid. But I just feel like most of these books, I don't get how they won. They all just felt fine. <laughs> That's my overall prevailing feeling from this video. They're, they're all just, I guess it makes sense because they are for the common denominator. They're for the people who read like, I don't know, only thrillers, but read like 10 books a year. And they, that means that person has read them and they can vote in it. Or they've heard of Stephen King <laughs> and they can vote in it. Or they've heard of Gone Girl. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I didn't love 
any of these. And I was a bit disappointed with some of the hyped ones that I thought I would enjoy, like Gone Girl, Girl on the Train. Like, I thought I could have good luck with those books considering they've been so hyped. But anyways, I will leave now because this video is 10 years long already. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed it. This was, um... A taxing video for me. I'm glad I'm never doing this again. Because well, I'm gonna do the Goodreads Awards at the end of the year. But I'm I mean I can only read the winners once, right? So it's never happening again. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you for going through this with me. <laughs> and I'll see you very soon in another one. Bye!